yes, I sir. think you might have been seen. Okay. Guys, very good morning. Are you able to see uh, hear my voice? Is it audible? Hello. We can hear you, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Green is visible. Okay. Okay. We continue the which topic we started in the last week. I mean bearings. Okay. I mean we already discussed bearing concept and uh, application of the bearing and types of bearing rolling contact bearing and i mean journal bearing journal bearing now and difference we discussed in the rolling contact bearings and journal bearing difference we discussed and in journal bearings and rolling contact bearings what type of load is going to act axial load trust load or combination of these two loads those things we discussed in the last class and also <clears throat> when we are discussing bearings very very important role lubrication without lubrications the bearing we cannot operate even if you operate without lubrication what will happen the bearing going to be failure due to high and wear and tear it will going to be failure at high temperature going to be generated <clears throat> hence you would like to avoid that high temperature you would like to generation of high temperature between two moving parts and fixed part when we are using appropriate fluid the fluid is called lubricant that will help us to smooth movement smooth rotation of the journal as well as to dissipate the how much amount of heat is generated that amount of heat it will be easily dissipated through the lubricant hence we are using appropriate lubrications in the bearing so now <clears throat> based on the lubrication properties the bearing design can be done so then we have been discussed what is the lubrication what are the types of lubrication thin lubrication thin film lubrication thick film lubrication okay in thick film lubrications we discussed uh, that hydrodynamic lubrication and hydrostatic lubrication right hydrostatic just to recap in first couple of minutes then we go for the today content now <clears throat> hydrostatic lubrication hydrodynamic lubrication thin i mean this hydrodynamic and hydrostatic lubrications are under thick film lubrication when this is the hydrodynamic lubrication it's due to self i mean due to i mean due to rotation of the uh, journal the oil film going to be generated we are not supplying external pressure to the oil only we are supplying the oil to where it is required i mean that in the bear in the bearing in our in the bearing inside we are supplying the oil only we are not sending any pressurized oil without pressure we are sending oil we are supplying the oil hence due to one rotation due to rotation of the journal the journal and uh, bearing surface going to be separated so okay that is hydrodynamic lubrication then the then the clearance is generated Dude, then clearance is generated then the bad journal it will be 
freely rotating. That's what hydrodynamic lubrication bearing. But <clears throat> hydrostatic lubrication, we are sending external, I mean, we are sending the oil with external pressure with the help of the pump. Hence, the bearing and surface going to be separated and the bearing and surface, I mean, the journal is going to be in the center position of the bearing. Journal going to be center position of the bearing. But in hydrodynamic bearing, the journal going to be a opposite distance from the center position, center point of the bearing. Okay. And that's what we discussed. Now, this is the main uh, difference. And what is another difference? Hydrostatic bearing we can use for heavy machines as compared to hydrodynamic bearing. And we also discussed that thin film lubrication. Now, just we do recap because these are very important as a mechanical students you should know thin lubrication and uh, allows to hydro allows to hydrodynamic lubrication just we discuss briefly one more time we discuss this just a few more points then we go for the next content see here <clears throat> the thin film lubrication is a bound lubrication there are some fatty acids which contain polar molecules this is the the diagram, see this diagram is belongs to thin film lubrications. Here the lubrication is the partially metal to metal. I mean, the lubrication is the metal to metal contact. Partially metal to metal contact. Now, how it is happening, we'll see. There are some certain fatty acids which contains the polar molecules. What is the polar molecules? What is the polar molecules? What is the polar molecules? I mean, molecules in which they are the permanent, okay, molecules in which they are permanent separation and the separation of positive and negative charges. That is called polar molecules. This polarity has tendency to orient the, orient the stick, orient and stick the surface. This polar tendency, polarity has tendency to orient and stick the surface of the particular fashion see here i mean this is the the lower part is stationary part the upper part is the moving part the load is acting here now this is the polar molecules stick orient and uh, stick on the surface see sticking on the surface of the moving part sticking on the surface of the lower part fixed part right now due to polar molecules properties okay now here i mean the cluster of molecules, now the cluster of molecules, this polar molecules, now the cluster of molecules cohering to the one surface, cohering to one another and adhering to the surface and adhering to the surface and top surface of the moving part and bottom surface of the fixed part, cohering to one another and adhering to another, adhering to another surface, okay from the um, to form the compact to form the appropriate thin film to form the appropriate thin film in this region due to this uh, positive and negative charges of the polar molecules okay now this is the partial contact now this is a partial lubrication this is a partial met partial lubrication now that's that's what point that b is represented b is represented the compact film with the prevents here, here you see here, here prevents the metal to metal due to this uh, mol pol molecules charges, I mean, pol molecule separation of positive and negative charges. Then these two surfaces are separated, with separated forming the thin film, forming the thin fluid film. But uh, come to this uh, point here, here, this is the region of where the metal to metal contact takes place. This is journal formed, I mean, due to high spot and searing takes place in this region. This is the metal to metal contact and the total process we are saying boundary lubrication or, I mean, boundary lubrication or, I mean, metal partial lubrication. I mean, partial metal to metal contact lubrication. Now, this is the boundary lubrication. I will, please tell me any one example. What is the boundary lubrication example? I mean, just to think and tell me, boundary lubrication is an example. Any example, please. 
I mean, here I have shown you some door hinges and machine tools. Apart from that, you tell me any one of the examples. Sir, use of graphite as a in uh, machine components as a lubricant. Yeah, graphite is solid lubricant because some metal, some uh, some uh, solids, it is smoothly functioning. It will be a smooth rotation generated. That's what we are using graphite as a solid film lubrication. And uh, it that surface, whenever that the wear and tear, also very uniformity. When you are using solid solid lubrication, such a kind of graphite. But here we are talking about here we are talking about the oil oxide film and polar molecules. I mean the polar molecules when it will be generated when the fatty acids fatty acids in that sense. I mean this is type of when we are using the lubricant film lubricant fluid. But whatever you are saying that is solid. But now we are talking about I mean fluid lubricant liquid lubricant that the forms the molecules the molecules are generated this uh, I mean separation of positive and negative charges okay. i'm asking that uh, one more example a very good example uh, you piston. think you can get it in automobile industries especially pistoning piston rings exactly correct uh, that is boundary lubricate means that is thin film lubrication or boundary lubrication okay thank you good and uh, now <clears throat> we also discussed about uh, hydrodynamic, uh, hydro hydrostatic, and uh, now we come to the elastro hydrodynamic lubricated bearings. In the elastro hydrodynamic lubricated bearings, now when the I mean these are the notations we are using here. Now this is journal, this is the clearance. Okay, I mean this is the H max, this is H mean minimum clearance. This is H max maximum clearance. Okay, this is the journal diameter. This is the board, I mean, the bearing diameter. Okay, I mean, this is a side view of the, this is a side view of this journal and bearing. This is oil film, oil film here. Okay, okay. Now, <clears throat> this is uh, nothing, you, that is, you know, what are the notations we are going to use in future, just you know, identified here. Now, when the fluid pressure, now we are talking about uh, hydro, elasto hydro dynamic lubrication. Elasto hydrodynamic lubrication. When the fluid pressure is high and surfaces are to be separated or not sufficiently rigid. Surfaces are separated, not sufficiently rigid. Now, for example, here I have to show you one more video. Now, see here. For, I mean, uh, elasto hydrodynamic lubrication. Here, Example, gears, matting, missing gears, missing teeth of, missing tooth of gears, and the bearings, roller bearing, sorry, roller bearing, and cam socks. Now, here that the last, I mean, here that the fluid pressure is high and the surface to be separated and not sufficiently rigid. Fluid pressure is high. Now, for example, when the when the two gears are very high speed rotation, then due to self pressure of the fluid, it will be very high. Then these two missing teeth are contact each other. During that time, due to high pressure, high pressure of the fluid, we already know that here PR is there, radial pressure is there, tangential PT, tangential pressure is there, also axial thrust also there, right? Due to that, the high pressure fluid try to deform this surface, try to deform this uh, contact surfaces. Then that deformation is called elastic deformation. When elastic deformation is happening in this region, <clears throat> then what will happen? The thin fluid is occupied this region. It makes the fluid film, lubrication film. I mean, this lubrication film may help us to free rotation of the component, but simultaneously, this is the deforming. Deform, simultaneously happening the deformation in this structure. <clears throat> Hence, 
Due to this kind of behavior, <coughs> we are saying that elastohydrodynamic lubrication. Because now, I mean, some now we are using engine oil and gearbox oil. When high speed of gears, what will happen? We are only talking about the PR radial thrust, axial thrust, and tangential. Sorry, radial for radial radial P, uh, PR radial force. I mean tangential force PG, axial thrust. I mean, axial force PA, we are talking about that only. Due to that, the oil also, it will be generated high pressure. High pressure on this region of the contact surface. That will cause us the deformation, elastic deformation. That elastic deformation, it will help us to make a thin film. It will help us to make a fluid film. But simultaneously deform the deformation happening so due to that film generation is called the hydrodynamic lubrication especially wherever the metal to metal contact is there for example cam and you can see here this is the example for this the cam follower and this is the roller bearing and this is the gears these are the things going to be subjected into hydrodynamic lubrication <clears throat> last hydrodynamic lubrication <clears throat> i mean please understand this type of example which lubrication belongs to which component you should understand you may expect this type of objective type questions okay now i come to this this already i have been posted in the video you can see that this is the this also uh, in the last class i mean somewhat we have been covered okay now i come to this viscosity <clears throat> Now, as of now, we have understood that lubrication is the important part of our bearing. And the lubrication, any fluid, if you take the primary properties, what is the important properties? Viscosity. Based on viscosity, viscosity, density, right? Now, what is the viscosity? You might have been studied in the fluid mechanics. Anyway, I'm not going to cover more more deep about viscosity now viscosity is the internal resistant fluid viscosity is the now one more thing i would like to tell you that now i forgot to tell you that now this uh, i mean yeah this is a boundary layer lubrication boundary layer lubrication what are the parameters going to be uh, what are the boundary layer, layer lubrication depends on the parameter is chemical composition of the fluid chemical composition of the lubricant fluid or lubricant oil and polar molecules and surface roughness these are very very important parameters to be considered while using boundary layer lubrication but i thought to tell you earlier but i forgot it now i am telling that don't confuse okay now viscosity come to viscosity now viscosity is you might have been studied, I think, second semester, I mean, third or fourth semester, you might have been studied. Because it is nothing but the internal frictional resistance offered by the fluid to, to change in shape or relative motion of its part. Change in shape. Please, can you tell me what is the change in shape? What is the change in shape? Please, tell, uh, someone tell me that. What is the change in shape? How the change in shape is happened due to internal frictional resistance force offered while the fluid what is the change in shape simple example can you tell me that please hello what is change in shape oh, sir once repeat the question sir yeah Our question is See here, <clears throat> yeah, I come to this. Internal frictional resistance force offered, the same thing I'm reading, offered the offered by a fluid to change in shape. The internal resistance force offered to the fluid. Due to internal resistance force, the fluid surface changes. Now I am clearly asking that for your physical understanding, what is here? Change in shape means what is it, what it is here. The change in shape means what? 
while or when the internal is clear of the fluid what what the, the displaced layers of the fluids like uh, if they are in the uh, one stack to one or uh, one of the other they will be sliding open each other yes okay okay partially correct i correct appropriate answer i agree with you <clears throat> but i clearly i tell you that physical understanding i take one steel plate steel plate a very good i mean super finished steel plate okay super surface finished steel plate you take it now take one drop of water and one drop of castor oil one drop of coconut oil one drop of petrol keep this all four drops on the plate surface what will happen the shape of the each drop going to be different because the internal resist internal frictional resistant force different for each fluid based on the molecular interaction that's what that that's what we are saying that the internal resistance force offered by the fluid change in shape or relative motion of its part well, for example when we are using coconut oil when we are using fluid oil any lubricant oil in between the parts i mean when we are using lubricant oil when the two parts we are using in the two parts one is fixed one another one is rotation in between we are using as a lubricant oil during that time the internal resistance force developed by the fluid is a different for different fluids that's what that that's what i am telling this uh, very good example for understanding the physical physical understanding of this internal resistance force okay now now we are considering here two plates very simple two plates one is the lower plate is a stationary plate this i mean this lower plate is stationary plate this is the moving plate now we are assuming that here now i mean that fluid for our understanding just we are doing imaginary here just we are understanding as imaginary part here this like imagine imagine it there's a fluid particles are if the fluids are assumed to be a balls assumed to be balls i mean assume that the molecules of oils are visible and assumed to be balls sitting in between the two plate now the lower part is fixed one the lower plate the stationary plate is fixed one the upper one is moving plate moving plate now this is velocity u now what type of force is generated here while moving while apply the force no p here this is the part the bottom part of this plate is subjected into shear that is <clears throat> the bottom part is subjected into shear then p by a is shear shear stress developed in this now see here now now this fluid is sitting on the stationary plate now this is velocity here zero but this this fluid balls this fluid particle sitting on the moving plate then when we are moving this plate when we are trying to move this plate these particles are moving along with the fluid then this velocity going to be is different from this lower or lower particles of the fluid right based on that relation we are saying that in the mean the intermediate layers will be moved to the velocity which is a proportional to their distance that's what we studied in the fluid mechanics according to the newton's law of viscosity right so i mean here u by h1 now i mean for this distance this distance is u corresponding velocity i, I mean this distance is h sorry sorry this distance is h the velocity is u h by u u by h sorry u by h but suppose if i am taking this ball this fluid particle velocity is u1 at the h distance h1 then i can create the relationship proportional relationship here u by h is equal to u1 by h1 if you take another h2 here then u2 dot u2 dot by h2 right h2 i mean this is the mathematically i formed the equation now the tangential force now the time in tangential so whatever we applied is nothing but the shear force shear stress so now i am making the relation based on the newton's law of viscosity p by a shear stress shear, shear stress is proportional to u by h shear stress is proportional to u by h why i am putting it proportional because the fluid is a playing important role 
depends on flu. Suppose I'm using here water. Suppose I'm applying the force 5 Newton in the plate. Now I'm using here castor oil. The moment 5 Newton. Now I apply the force on the plate 5 Newton. <clears throat> right? The moment of plate is different speeds. Suppose I'm using here, you know, for, I mean, castor oil, initially castor oil, castor oil, CO, castor oil. And later I'm using coconut oil, coconut oil. Then the speed up, I still I'm applying the 5 Newton. The, for, the moment of the moment of the plate is different speed. That is depends on fluid behavior, fluid viscosity. That's what early we discussed, right? <clears throat> Depends on fluid viscosity. I mean, especially this is a sticking property. The sticking property is based on our viscosity, a viscous effect of the fluid. Suppose if I'm using water, then the, even the plate is moving very fast manner while we'll apply same velocity, same Newton by Newton. Hence, I'm introducing P by A is proportional to mu by U by H. Now the P mu, the prop I would like to remove the proportional based on the Newton's law of viscosity. I am introducing that a fluid behavior viscosity mu. <clears throat> okay. Now, so suppose our fluid behaviors are non-linear. You might have been studied the dixotropic fluid and Newtonian fluid, non-Newtonian fluid. I mean, you might have been studied dixotropic fluid, Newtonian fluid, or non-Newtonian fluid in your circular mechanics. I mean, based on that, the fluids are non-linear viscous, non-linear behavior. The velocity distribution is non-linear behavior. Hence, instead of u by h, we are going to use du by dh. Du by dh when the velocity is non-linear. Now, now see here. Now you mu, from this relation, from these relations, I mean mu is equal to p h divided by a u. P h divided by a u from the equation 16.1. Now it will define our viscosity of the oil. This is mu is absolute viscosity so absolute viscosity unit is in newton second per millimeter square that is mega you can write megapascal megapascal now you can convert it into centipies because most of the unit in uh, most of the manufacturers they are considered centipies also i mean this is large centipies we can convert into centipies this is uh, 10 for 9 10 for 1 megapascal second is equal to 10 for 9 centipies. Okay, this is another unit of the viscosity. Now, we come to this uh, second thing. I mean, I'm um, viscosity. Say again, I mean, this is viscosity is nothing but property of fluids. Just now we have been discussed, which is due to the internal friction. So that's what we discussed early now, early. This is due to the internal friction under the molecular phenomena. Molecular phenomena between the particles fluid particles fluid particles and when will be when it will be contact with the other surface okay i mean this causes the resistant to the fluid flow this internal friction and molecular phenomena of this is going to be causes the resistant to fluid flow in the surface wherever you are we are keeping these fluids then causes the fluid flow very simple example you see here gear I mean, for example, in the test tube here, in this test tube, assumed to be a, these two test tubes are assumed to be a coconut oil. This test tube assumed to be water. This test tube assumed to be, sorry, this two test tube assumed to be coconut oil. This test tube assumed to be a, a castor oil. This test tube assumed to be a, some other oil. I mean, this test tube assumed to be water. Then all the test tubes are same capacity. Same volume, okay, same volume, same dimension. Same volume, same dimension, say identical test tube. Identical quantity we have been considered. Take this test tube and make it inclined position. Then because now see here that the coconut oil, for example, coconut oil is not falling down because of the high viscosity. But see a castor oil is falling down because of the now. I mean, usually at... Uh, room temperature with i mean castor oil is more viscous effect, more viscous as compared to uh, coconut oil i'm i'm not talking about the temperature dependent i'm talking about 
internal friction and molecular phenomena based on fluid i am please understand i am not talking about the temperature here you may you may ask that sir may the coconut oil is less viscous as compared to castor oil i agree with that for our, our understanding i am talking about the internal friction and molecular phenomena how it will be acting due to gravitational effect while taking all fluid same quantity in identical test tube and make them to equal inclination then how it will be yes that for uh, that understanding only i am talking about this now these are the some fluids for example water milk say oil say 20 oil say 30 say 40 these are the viscosity of ordinary material now i mean how what is the viscosity we are using i mean another viscosity i mean viscosity there are two types one is the dynamic viscosity that the uh, not two types sorry the dynamic viscosity and the kinematic viscosity what is kinematic viscosity please someone can you rip, rip, uh, can you tell that what is a dynamic kinematic viscosity hmm. kinematic viscosity please hello sir it's internal resistance of a fluid uh, like under gravity or gravitational force i'm uh, okay okay no 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 i'm asking kinematic viscosity i mean very simple uh, relation no dynamic viscosity and kinematic viscosity sir like we include densities u by rho kinematic by ah, yes that's all that is kinematic viscosity it's a kinematic viscosity always a centistoke dynamic viscosity we are always saying centipoise or pascal second uh, this kind of i mean this kind of questions you can expect all competitive exam also <laughs> so please be careful now come to this <laughs> lubricants for a uh, clocks and instrument oils we are using viscosity of oil 5 to 20 well and the motor oils we are using 10 to 50 roller bearings we are using this lubricant i mean visco lubricant oil viscosity ranges 10 to 300 centistoke <laughs> most of the supplier we are they are considering the unit is centistoke kinematic viscosity okay now this is the medium and the speed gear oils we are using 550 to 150 centistoke then warm and warm gear oils 200 to 1000 centistoke so because i mean here then only we able to obtain very low speed, high velocity ratio even uh, we can go using warm and warm gear we can reduce the velocity ratio 300 is to 1 also 301 also so there important role of the viscosity of the lubricant okay <clears throat> now i mean see here this is the viscosity this is high viscosity of high viscosity index of oil moderate viscosity index of oil low viscosity index of oil but this is our range then why we can't use you may ask questions here now suppose if i'm using this Suppose I am considering now our we are we are having a spur gear spur gear that make a system for the power transmission then that place water can I use water water is very low viscosity right as compared to other fluids can I use water as viscosity I mean lubricant fluid we cannot use and we have to use some appropriate range that's what. I mean, very low viscous oil also. For perhaps we can use for electronics industries. There are also in the electronics industries some electronic uh, system. They are using stepper motor. In that place, we cannot use very high viscous fluid because for I mean, 360 degree rotation, they are trying to rotate 0.25 degree or sometimes a 0.1 degree. Then how many rotation? I mean, how many steps for one rotation around 3600 steps during that time we cannot go for high viscous fluid as a lubricant in the stepper motor because it will be a problem. It should be a very high. It should be a provide good rotation and simultaneously it will be acting as a lubricant then in that place then i mean based on that applications we have to use appropriate lubricants but mostly this is the range we are using but anyway we are going to discuss more about this in the later okay 
So now I come to the measurement of viscosity. How we are measuring the viscosity? All right? I mean, in practical condition, between two plates for, I mean, early we have been discussed that uh, one is a fixed plate, another is a stationary plate. How it is behaving like that? For our physical understanding, we considered and we discussed. But practical condition we cannot use. If you take two plates, stationary plate and moving plate, we cannot hold, first of all, our fluid. For our understanding, we have gone through that and we have understood the physics and concept. But uh, hence, I mean, we are using some standard methods for measuring the viscosity of the fluid. Okay. I mean, that the standard methods they are using, I mean, in this standard, the popular in the in the in these popular methods, I mean the popular method is nothing but sable viscometer and red to viscometer and angular an angular viscometer. In these popular methods, we are determining the viscosity is to measure the time required for given volume of or given capacity of oil while passing through the standard test tube diameter. That the standard test tube diameter is nothing but Keblerity tube. Keblerity tube we are using standard Keblerity tube we are using for finding the viscosity of fluid. I mean, in the standard test specimen, standard test tube, we are using these three methods. Which three methods? Red to viscometer and sable to viscometer and angular viscometer. In these three methods, we are using this standard test tube for measuring the viscosity. For example, in sable to viscometer, mostly the US people are following the sable to viscometer, right? And uh, here the, then they are considering that uh, 60 centimeter cube of oil, 60 centimeter cube of oil as a standard volume for a testing purpose, right? And they are measuring the, I mean, then they are flow, I mean, allowing flow through that fluid in that standard test tube, then they are measuring the time, how much time it takes for the 60 centimeter cube of oil flowing through the tube, the standard the standard specimen or standard diamonds of the test tube. Then that time they are saying the standard universal second, yes, you, yes, okay. And now, redwood viscometer. Redwood viscometer, UK people are, are using this concept. They are taking, I mean, uh, 50 centimeter cube of oil and they are passing through the standard test tube of the tube. I mean, this oil. I mean, you may ask that here they are using 60 centimeter cube, here they are using 50 centimeter cube. That empirical relations, it may be a different. In the empirical relation, they may be used to some constant parameters that. We have to go through that the papers, we can get it. Okay. Now, but rest reduced viscometer, they are taking 50 centimeter cube of oil. I mean, this kind of object you may expect even a competitive exam. Reduced redu viscometer, what is the standard volume of oil we are considering for the testing purpose? Similarly, in sable viscometer, what is the standard capacity or volume of oil we are taking? Okay, these are important. And the second one is third one is angular viscometers. That one is we are following angular viscometer. Here also the viscosity is measured by, I mean, the ratio of time taken by oil to the time taken by the water. Now we are using a reference fluid as a water. I mean, while the which fluid we want to measure the viscosity that the fluid is passing through the tube, we are measuring the time of the fluid. And we are measuring the our time taken by water also. Then that ratio we are considering this. Then that ratio we are considering for evaluating our viscosity of the unknown oil. Using angular viscometer. Here we are using the angular viscometer in terms of degree E. That is the degree E is nothing but a ratio of time taken by the oil to the time taken by the water at the same temperature. Now, these are the things, this is a three very important methods. I mean, I, this is the sable viscometer, red viscometer, and angular viscometer. So, who are using and what are the standard procedure and what is the quantity 
how much quantity they are considering for the testing purpose just those things we have been discussed okay now now i come to the viscosity index very important property because viscosity index viscous resistance of lubricant oil is based on this internal molecular force internal molecular force we are just now we discussed internal molecular force when the temperature increases then viscosity going to be decreased vice versa temperature decreases viscosity going to be increased for finding unknown viscosity of the oil we are following this is the ASTM standard uh, ASTM suggested and standard method this method so in this method now I mean there are two types of oil we are considering one type of oil is I mean viscosity index for example viscosity index 100 this oil have very small change of very small change of viscosity vi viscosity index 100 is very small change with respect to temperature for example i am taking oil x the viscosity index of oil x is 100 and i am taking oil x1 or, or i am taking oil or sorry i am taking oil a and b we consider viscosity index oil a i am taking 100 viscosity index oil i am taking b that is maybe uh, zero but here we are taking two reference fluids one is viscosity oil 100 viscosity index oil 100 another one is viscosity oil index zero means that the two oils one oil for example which oil I assumed to be A, that oil for temperature, room temperature 27 to, it will be changes to 28 degree. The changes are going to, the viscosity index changes are going to be very small. For example, the viscosity oil index, viscosity of oil index VI is 100 at 27 degree Celsius. Suppose in 29 degree Celsius, sorry, 28 degree Celsius, it may be 99, right? Very small changes. Suppose another oil, which one I considered viscosity index zero, that oil change is going to be, for example, 70, that oil viscosity is 70, but in room temperatures 27 degrees to 28 degree, then change is going to be 4, maybe 72, 64, 64. Within 1 degree, the changes are very high. But where the viscosity index 100 is changes from 100 to 99 at the same temperature difference. That's what fast, very small change of viscosity index. We are considering one reference oil. Another one is which oil is very large changes at with the same temperature that oil considers as a reference oil, reference fluid, reference oil too, for finding our viscosity index of unknown oil. <laughs> then based on that concept that the ASTM the ASTM community suggested that viscosity index of lower, now lower means this sun L minus Y divided by L minus H. This is the Y is unknown viscosity, unknown viscosity index of fluid, unknown viscosity index of lubricant oil. Now, now this is based on that. Now I'm considering the, I mean, this X axis uh, temperature and the Y axis is I'm considering this one is in, uh, our viscosity okay y axis now y axis now see here now this is large i mean uh, large changes viscosity changes is large see here from to here to here large changes which oil which one is i mean this is large changes right now i am considering this is small changes oil the oil C, D, D, A is small changes, small changes of oil as a reference fluid one when we considered viscosity index 100. Now, oil C, A is large changes where I am considering the reference fluid two, right? Reference fluid two corresponding temperature 100 degree Fahrenheit. This is it at a high temperature. 212 degree Fahrenheit. Now, see here. Now, this is the unknown fluid. Now, L minus Y.
From this, we are able to find out what is viscosity in the car. While we are going to use this similar uh, similar formula in this problem, just keep in this formula in your mind. Later, you can understand when you are going to discuss the problem. Okay, for an oil is seventy has less rate of change of viscosity with the temperature as compared to an oil with sixty. So viscosity index sixty is. In one degree itself, it will be more changes in viscosity, and 70 is in one degree temperature difference will be less change in viscosity. Okay, high viscous index, the change in change in viscous effect is less, but low viscous index, the change in viscous effect will be more. Okay, now I come to this sum of the uh, temperature versus viscosity of the fluid. Now this is a chart very very important. Okay. Now see here this is SA oil 10, SA oil uh, SA oil 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 70, 70, like that. Now see here, oil. <clears throat> this is the temperature. This is absolute viscosity, centipoise. Centipoise or 10 power minus 9 newton second per meter square. 10 power minus 9 newton second per meter square. For example, in the problem, in the design problem, in the design of bearing problem, we are considering the SAE oil 20. The operating temperature of bearing is 50 degrees Celsius. Then, then during that time, we have been given to you SAE oil 20 and this chart. You have to find out the viscosity of the oil. Now, corresponding 50 degrees Celsius, that viscosity is 50 uh, centipoise. 50 centipoise. This is when SAE twenty. Suppose I am asking that the temperature is seventy. I mean, temperature is sixty degree. So temperature is sixty degree. What is the viscosity corresponding twenty? SAE twenty line is this one. This is sixty degree. Then where is SAE twenty? SAE twenty line is this one. Now viscosity is forty. Absolute viscosity is forty centipoise. So in this manner, you have to use this. Plot. Use this graph to find out our viscosity of the fluid. Viscosity of the lubricant oil. Now, this is the engine. This is the engine oil SA30. Now, what is the viscosity? Now, you should please keep in mind. This is very as a mechanical engineer, you should know viscosity SA oil 30. Whatever we are using in two wheeler bikes, right? SA30, SA20. We are using in our bikes, two wheeler. Now, what is the viscosity? Suppose our engine oil is at room temperature. What is the viscosity? Okay, <laughs> SA30 at room temperature. For example, hundred. Now, these are two wheelers. Now, four wheelers. But this is a mini trucks. Mini trucks we are using. SAE30. SAE30. At SAE30 at 50 degrees Celsius, viscosity is 5 as compared to Our SA20. Okay, this is a mini trucks, and uh, this is the sorry. This is a scooter oil. Extremely sorry. I mean, this is a, I mean scooter oil. This is a mini trucks. SA40. One five W SA40 is a mini truck. This one is mini trucks. This is scooter. Sorry. Okay. Now this is the oil. You should uh, understand. Now I come to pattern uh, situation. Now. I mean, what is pattern of equation? See, <clears throat> to determine our coefficient of friction, now we are using bearings. In the bearings, one part is fixed part. This is a fixed part. This is a rolling part. This is rotating part. When it is rotating part, in between we are already we have been discussed enough information why we are using lubricant. In this in this part, we in this two in between two parts we are using lubricant, right? Now we would like to define the coefficient of friction, right? That coefficient of friction based on this guy based on this concept we are trying we are following the design of the bearing. Now, actually he determined this concept to determine. He I mean he developed the concept he the patterns. Developed the concept for determining the coefficient of friction, especially in journal bearing. This is journal bearing. Okay, 
in this as in this concept he, sorry in this concept he assumed that there are two i mean two uh, assumptions one is the soft is concentric with the bearings now this is a bearing the journal or shop this is journal or shop okay the bearing is subjected to light flow he assumed that for developing his concept this is a two assumptions okay now i mean the first one is see the notation what is the notation used the radius of the journal length of the bearing this is the length of the bearing and this is the radial clearance between the journal sorry journal and bearing and this is the ns is the journal speed ns is the journal speed now what is the velocity of the journal now velocity of the journal is this is cylindrical journal right then this as usual formula pi dn then 2 pi r into ns now i mean this is uh, what is the rate of um, now as of now we disc already we discussed now the p is nothing but tangential frictional force p is nothing but tangential frictional force acting here based on our earlier discussed concept now mu into a into u by h tangential frictional force and now a is the area of the journal a is the area of the journal 2 pi r l surface area of the journal 2 pi 2 pi r l 2 pi r l then surface velocity we know 2 pi r n then h is our distance this i mean sorry h is h is sorry c h is c is the distance between the journal and bearing this is a clearance you may say c r h c r h now this are the notation again substitute this u value and h value here finally that i mean tangential frictional force going to come this relation i mean substitute this value substitute this h is in terms of l sorry h is in terms of c and u is in terms of 2 pi r n s 2 pi r n s and a is nothing but 2 pi r l substitute here finally we are going to get this formula this is our tangential frictional force 4 pi r square 4 pi squared r squared in l into mu ns by c based on the newton's law newton's law newton's law viscosity concept is a tangential force now define now what is the tan frictional torque based on the tangential force frictional torque based on the tangential force is nothing but into radius that will give you frictional torque now once we have found the frictional torque now this is the frictional torque based on the tangential force now later we are going to find out this frictional torque based on the bearing pressure bearing pressure right when the bearing rotates the pressure is going to be developed in between the clearance right that also should be considered that bearing pressure that i mean one frictional torque first one is we have found based on the tangential force the second thing we are going to find the frictional torque based on the bearing pressure when this bearing pressure i mean the frictional torque based on bearing pressure must be equal to frictional torque based on the tangential force then only the system going to be mechanically equilibrium finally using these two relations we would like to find out what is the coefficient of friction that is our ultimate concept okay now now first we have considered the tangential force for finding the frictional torque now next we are considering bearing pressure what is the bearing pressure here i mean bearing pressure see here the load is acting here radially w i mean due to bearing pressure here now what is this this is a projection area what is the projection area d i mean r in tl this is 2 r in tl this is a d in tl this is a projection area is a d in tl then d is going to be 2 into r in tl then what is the bearing pressure how much load is acting here then uh, by, yeah i complete this one almost complete uh, by 2 rl within 2 minutes okay w by 2 rl now what is the i mean once we know this the bearing pressure from this we able to find out our torque how much frictional torque here yeah, frictional torque f into w in torque f into w in torque due to coefficient of friction of the fluid friction of the fluid nothing but coefficient of friction of lubrication 
lubricant fluid then f into w into r r is our radius of the channel that will give you frictional torque now this frictional torque must be equal to our tangential I mean the torque which torque we have found based on the tangential frictional force then from these two relations we able to find out our coefficient of friction f okay actually we are introducing here coefficient of friction f we do not know based on this equating this equation i mean d and f d and f finally we are going to find out the coefficient of friction this is called patrop's equation now in this equation two i mean now two uh, we are playing uh, two constant one is r by c another one is this is uh, in the patrop equation indicates that there are two important dimensionless parameter one is r by c another one is mu ns by p for finding the coefficient of friction of the fluid finding the coefficient of friction of the lubricants lubrication oil okay what is time now hello sir 11 11 5 sir okay. i stop here okay tomorrow we continue uh, tomorrow and uh, this uh, minor one going to be conducted on friday okay whatever we are going to be covered till thursday that will be considered for minor one okay sir yeah hey guys yes, i mean actually one thing i tell you i would like to convey one information even i discussed with the cr because i have gone through lms whatever i posted video most of them not seen the video that's what i am going slow at least you may give attention during the class hours that's what i am going slow but sure i am going to complete the syllabus i can manage the time don't worry slowly I mean any chapter if i am starting first two classes it will be usually going to be slow once you are understanding the concept we can go for very fast manner doesn't matter <coughs> so next class we are going to increase the speed slightly increase the speed and within two or three class we are going to complete this chapter okay then the fourth chapter we are able i i we i able i i try to complete before mid sum at least wow well, three by fourth of the fourth chapter going to be completed before mid sum okay so we have a i can manage i can the uh, uh, manage the time doesn't matter so if you are seeing the video i can increase the speed i can go for very fast manner because i have gone through your uh, participants in the lms most of them not seen the video uploaded video then i thought the students may give uh, in more intention during the class that's what i am going little slow but next i mean next class onwards slowly i am going to increase first couple of classes any chapter it will take some time for understanding the concept once we have understood the concept we can go fast manner okay so please go ahead if you have any doubts kalyan only 62 students are Kalyan, are you there in the meeting? Yes, sir. Like some people uh, are uh, having a network issue, sir. Like in Maharashtra, uh, they stopped uh, internet uh, services, so people are unable to join. Actually, yes, sir. In Jharkhand, too. Okay, but okay. I actually I will. Uh, really i am worrying about that only so some some students they have a network problem but those students also na they are not seeing the video lecture in the lms not only from my subject i heard from other subject also because the lms as a coordinator faculty at faculty concerned subject able to see yeah this guy accessed this video this time like that 
Yeah, yes, sir. we know that. Yes. So that's what I am going. Uh, I mean, worrying and going like somewhat slow also. I can go fast manner. At least students, some seventy students. I mean, usually seventy students will be there. At least this seventy students are able to see the video. I mean, during class itself, they are able to understand. Please, I am suggesting that. Please, you see the video from the elements. I am also going to increase my speed. Even though next class I am going to increase the speed, doesn't matter. But I am requesting everyone, please go through the video. Yes, sir. Yeah. Any doubt, please? Because I observed this one of the feedback, I am going a little slow. That's what I given the clarification. Sure, I will increase the speed. For, for your point of view, I am going to increase the speed and we will complete the syllabus. Effective manner, no problem. Uh, anything else, Kalyan? Uh, nothing, sir. That's it. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you.